Hey, what's up, Kick and Bass? This is Ader, and today we're gonna break down my latest track, ESO. It's a track I made last summer, if I remember correctly, and I just self released uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, the release is going pretty well. I got some editorial support on Spotify by Operator and Minimal Tech. And yeah, the truck is right now for country streams and it does really well in the club. So I figured I might show you how I made it. So yeah, let's just jump into the project. Okay, we're in the project and as usual, uh, I'm going to go through all the channels and show you all the processing on every sound in the track and I'm gonna explain you why I did what I did. And um, yeah, hopefully get you some cool tips for your next production. Uh, you can see here I have a couple tracks that I use for referencing. Uh, this is the radio edit for the track. And let's take a look maybe at the arrangement of the track. So starting from the intro, we just have the drums and I have my filter engaged on master to get rid of the of the lows. Around the 15 second mark, we are the end of bass. Uh, this should be bar 17. No, actually, bar nine, bar 17 is this one. Here we just let the bass go and we start introducing the main hook of the track, which is the guitar. It's filtered and it's the second version, the one with, with more ambience. Here we take away the bass again, but we add in a new hook to make up for it, which is the main guitar. And you always need to keep in mind when you're doing arrangement stuff that if you take away something, you should add something else. Because the you should always give something to the listener to catch on to and to be interested in. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to be your new section is just going to be an emptier version of the previous section, which doesn't make much sense. Um, and it's boring. Uh, so, yeah, always keep in mind, take away something, add something else. Here, took out the drums, added the vocal. drop in, we have the first 15 seconds of the drop here, towards the end we have a little fill. And then we switch to a different pattern for the guitar. Here we take away the kick and the guitar, so we add back in the vocal, and we have some new effects and this new uh, vocal thingy here for the transition. I will start building up again. I almost took away completely the drums, but I kept the hats going because I still wanted something to keep the groove going. This is a dance track, so at the end of the day, you will, you should always give your listener or your dance floor something to follow the rhythm of. And yeah, this is what the hat is doing here. <laughs> Here you can see how I go into the drop quite dry. There is nothing much happening on the drop, but to give that nice impact, instead of adding like an actual sample, what I did was I uh, turn Endless Mile way up on the vocal towards the end and give it a long release time. Uh, 
it so that it kind of looks like a, an effect. <laughs> For this section that doesn't have drums, we still fill the whole spectrum with that effect. Get the drums again. And here I cut the drums, but I add the vocal. And I just keep this right here going, the rest is gone. And here actually you can see that Pro QMB in action. You can still, you, you still get some of the guitar but it's not as prominent and your vocal has enough space in the mix because of that compressor. Again, we did a little, another little fill here and then here we introduce the new ride. for the open hat. Here I got rid of the clap, uh, but we still have the hats going and I introduced the new, the new vocal that we used before for the transition. This time it's on the drop. Here I did something that I usually don't do, it's a little bit unusual, but I think it worked well. I took away the, the kick and kind of used this as a way to to say to the listener, yo, we're going into a big break now. And I took away the kick, but we still keep the bass going and the sub is still there. <laughs> And we're going to the break, still keeping some of the elements from the drop, which is like the hat and the guitar, which changes the pattern, but it's still there as a, as a sound. And we start building up again. We have the new effect here. I filtered the, the guitar and introduced the vocal, so to take away and give something. And for the first time in the whole track, we drop in with the vocal from the beginning of the drop. Uh, and we also have this uh, kind of breakbeat thing with the kick. And we kind of do a core response between the vocal and the guitar. For the first time we have the full loop playing on top of the drop. I 
And then we just close the drop with the usual uh, loop we got used to. And I think that would be it for the arrangement. Uh, well, you can see that you can do a lot with not that many elements. Uh, the important thing is that you that you spend some time figure out creative ways to put them together. And, and yeah, don't get your listener bored. Uh, always switch it up every now and then. Uh, some people I I guess have problems doing a radio edit from the extended. I can show you how I made mine in this case. Uh, I just did this thing here, which is a reverse vocal. You basically just record some reverb from your reverse vocal and then reverse it again and you get this effect here. And I used it to introduce the first break of the track. And at the end, I think I just let the, the normal echo or reverb that I had on the drums do the outro for me. Yeah, I just had some data on the drums group. Uh, not sure where, probably it's the endless mile. But that's all you need to do. Uh, I just made sure it wasn't too long. Uh, as you can see, I have a couple other different arrangements and this is the first arrangement I guess and it was a bit too long it was a full almost seven minutes for the track and uh, in the end it was just uh, a little bit more than four no a little bit more than six actually but yeah still shorter um, yeah I guess there was too much time wasted doing nothing in this version here so I just figure out I might make it shorter. Sure